Welcome everyone. It's the 16th of, of September. And this is Documentation Office Hours Asia. Uh, topics I've got on the list for today, action items, DevOps World 2022, Hacktoberfest, and any other topics that you'd like to add to the list. Oh. Okay, all right, good. The Hacktoberfest one, we spent significant time on it in Europe office hours, and I'd love to do it again here if you can, if the two of you can stand that. It's been really good to go through the preparation work. All right, action really, items. I thought so, last week you were gonna kill me if I didn't shut up, so. <laughs> no, you were, you, were, you were marvelous, and it was a great story to tell the show, hey, look, we're making progress in every office hours session, so. This to earlier today, when we did it in Europe office hours, it was the first time they've actually processed anything for Hacktoberfest. So action okay. items, nothing to report of positive. The things are all still on the backlog and probably will stay there for six weeks. I do have to actually, I, I guess I should warn, um, Mark is out of the office the week of September 26 through the 30th. And then October 11 or 10 through October 27. So the, the September 26th through 30th is DevOps World. I propose we cancel during that time. October 10 through October 27 is Mark take Colleen to Italy. <gasps> and, and allora non, non si facciamo. So, so yes, we will. Uh, I would propose we cancel any objections to canceling those those during those weeks. Not at all. No. Okay, great. All right, thanks. Okay, DevOps world. So uh, we've had several blog posts arrive on various topics for uh, DevOps world. And uh, you can read them, et cetera. And the modernizing a plugin pull request has been switched to, oops, bad choice. Let's try the real <laughs> That's what I get for embedding an old URL. Just a minute, we'll go find the real one now. So this thing, and if I'm lucky, it will, here's the blog post properly giving credit for me and for Diraj writing it. And I upgraded Diraj's um, biography based on his submission for a Google Summer of Code. Ah. And so Meg, you're certainly welcome to review. Would love to have reviews, anyone else who can. So the here's the, the link now. Oh, right, I know what it was. I had to change the location because I had scheduled it in the last guest to publish in June and it's only September now. Okay. And you meant to have this, um, the video here showing Hacktoberfest of 2021? Yeah, because that's when this was created. Okay. So the video is just a, uh, this is a link to, the, to a playlist of, of five videos that were all created during that time. Ah, that's right. And you're not redoing those. You're just doing a class based on that material, right? Exactly right. So we're using what we do, what's what's happened is inside these pages are links to subsets of the videos. This one, for instance, when you click the play button, it will take you exactly to a thing that describes this precise thing. Mm -hmm. So subsets are are embedded throughout these in hopes of making it easier for people to contribute. So this one is in part two and it jumps into it however deep in order to show that step. Such good work. Yeah, it's been fun, it really has. So, um, so plan to merge September 21, uh, reviews welcomed and encouraged. And happy to hear any improvements, et cetera. Any questions on DevOps world? Oh. Okay, next topic then is Hacktoberfest. And this one is where the work happens. So we've now got a page on Jenkins.io for Hacktoberfest 2022. 
and it highlights how you get connected, what you do, list of repositories marked for Hacktoberfest. So there are right now 71 in the Jenkins. Oh, this is the wrong. Yeah, this is no, this is the right one. Yeah, 71 repositories currently marked for Hacktoberfest and etc. So now the challenge for us in the doc sig is we need to identify good first issues and others. Now, I learned that there's a, we had initially done a marking of these to say, hey, we'll mark them with Hacktoberfest if they are, uh, need some skill, need some experience, and we'll mark them only with good first issue if they are good for a first time yeah. contributor. But the problem is, Hacktoberfest instructions say mark all pull request or all issues as Hacktoberfest. So good first issue plus Hacktoberfest means it's easy and only Hacktoberfest means it's more challenging. Okay. So that makes sense. Now, so got, I mean, you've got a, We've got a couple of issues that you don't really want work now or don't want work by an outsider. Are those also marked for Hacktoberfest? They are not. And okay. I, although actually, this one so good thing you asked that so here's one that is incorrectly marked that way so let's fix that because or is that going to be grabbed by somebody that like maybe someone who is familiar they were thinking about no well see the problem we've got is any of these wiki migration proposals okay. end up creating more work for us okay. than than they're actually worth Okay. Because we've got a lot of we've got a whole collection of pull requests for wiki migration right now that are stalled, because what happens is the an inexperienced contributor goes and reads the old page, and having read the old page, then attempts to do the action and they perform the transformation, but they don't know that a seven year old or an eight year old or a 10 year old wiki page has a lot of things in it that are now mistaken that are just sure. wrong. And so now we have to have an expert that goes in and corrects all of the mistakes in the page. And the reality is if we look at all the bug reports that are listed with the wiki migration label or all of the, the pull requests with wiki migration, there are about 10 of them that are blocked right now because nobody's done the, the, done the whole, whole bunch of work to go in and correct all the, all the errors in them. Okay. So, so how does an outsider know that? Or do we have, does the description of each issue include information that the wiki information itself is obsolete? So this involves that or we, or do we have a general, or maybe in October it said everything that is currently marked as wiki migration are things that do not, are not easy migrations or. We've, so we've definitely got, we've definitely got instructions here in office hours that say, Wiki migration is not recommended for Hacktoberfest, but I think you've got a good point. Maybe what we ought to do is also put text on each of these pages saying this requires additional skills, or rather it's, it's not so much these as here, the issues that are Wiki migration, because the, the pull requests that are Wiki migration, there's, they just have to be reviewed by experts, but right. these issues, should not be marked as, oh, okay, a redirect, it's okay. This one actually is okay if we have it, have it marked for the, that. But in general, wiki migration, no, I'm not even gonna bother with it. We're gonna fix that, just take it out. Yes, it truly is a good first issue, but no, I don't want the confusion. So the idea being issues that are, that are labeled good wiki, wiki migration, will never be labeled good first issue and never be labeled Hacktoberfest. Uh -huh. and, and the idea being, I don't, I don't wanna add more load on the 10 that are already not making progress. Right. Okay, so, so back to the, then that tells us so if we look at the issues then that are currently labeled for Hacktoberfest, what we should see is a mix of easy and good first, of, of good first issues and issues. Oh, interesting. 
wait a second, label. Oh, whoops. It combined the labels. There we go. Okay, so we've got 17 open issues for Hacktoberfest. And if we look at those with good first issue, how do I do that? Label, good first issue. Then we've got 10. Okay. So now last time when we met, we did the first one or two pages and Europe office hours did pages five and six. I'd propose, let's take a look at pages three and four today. If okay. the two of you are okay with that, that way we can try to try to have at least been through many of the pages looking sure. for things. Okay, so the, and the way this has worked well is if you look at these things, just scan them and say, hey, are there things there that I think would be a good first issue? What about 37.99 that says it's, and, and 97, they both say they're redirects. Mm, yes. And oh, so the second one's wiki migration. Well, and yeah, I was like, one, uh oh, I think it's wikis. <laughs> yes. And this yeah. one should be a wiki migration and is not correctly labeled. Okay. So let's get that labeled. So good. We've, we got that corrected. Okay. What about the evergreen? Well, where one? do you see evergreen? 3771. Oh. Evergreen. Wow. I thought that was fixed long ago. Okay, let's see. I thought this was gone. Nope, it's still there. Okay. But this, if this is just about adding a banner, maybe that's a good first issue because. It, well, it depends. I think. I think in this case it would be, it would be rephrased as something even more more blunt than yeah. the blue ocean disclaimer that we put yes. into other other pages, right? Because this one, blue ocean is is actively being maintained but not being enhanced. Mm -hmm. Evergreen is not being maintained, not being enhanced, and is shut down. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, but now. Now the question is, what do we do with it? So we should, we could, I'm see the, the challenge for me is I'm not comfortable that a new person could successfully do that one. Okay. It could be okay. a Hacktoberfest topic because I think, I think it might be worth saying Hacktoberfest and saying, look, um, Evergreen has been shut down. The page, the pages that reference a evergreen can be removed can be redirected to a single summary page that says evergreen is offline is down and won't be brought back and it's not even used at your own risk it's, it doesn't exist any longer doesn't right exist. okay yeah, so good. All right, so Hacktoberfest is fair for that one, I think. Good. This Eclipse section in the IDE configuration page, what do you think, Kristen? Do you think an experienced Eclipse user could describe for people how to configure for Jenkins development? No, maybe not. I was like, I think you need someone who experienced in eclipse and experienced jenkins right <laughs> yes. right <laughs> Unfortunately, exactly it could be like it's one of those weird things where it's like maybe it is a hacktoberfest but it's going to have to have it's not a good first issue and i don't know i don't know if does, right. the be description, does the description make if i look at that and say i might be interested uh good question i i suspect not because what it's saying is <laughs> Look, use this wiki page and other places to describe how to configure Eclipse IDE. But what it warns is the wiki page is badly out of date. And, and the reality is that means it's out of date with Jenkins and it's out of date with Eclipse. 
And, and those two things, I, I think Kristen's right. It, it just won't work to have somebody try to create that from whole cloth. Right, okay. There's probably some, if somebody like that shows up in Hacktoberfest, they can always write and say, you know, they can always post and say, hey, you know. Absolutely. Hey, I'm a, I'm a right. Jenkins, Jenkins expert and I happen to love Eclipse. Do you mind yes. if I write a page about it? Absolutely. Yeah. We would love that. Yeah, that would be great. But yeah, but, but just because we don't tag it doesn't mean they can't have it. Exactly. exactly. Uh, we certainly can apply tags after the fact, right? If someone says, hey, I want to do this and they're successful, the bigger problem we've had in the past has been people saying, I want to do this and then they don't do anything. So, right. so I'm, I'm, we're more than happy to tag something Hacktoberfest after, after they've started on it. That would be just fine. Okay, this one. I don't know what that's saying. Okay. Okay, so I'm not sure what to do with this one because this is really, other than warning, I guess we could warn people in the, okay, so it's, this is, we could put in, information in this place saying, hey, you, when you register for an account, be warned, if you do not receive an, a response email, please uh, send email, open a, 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 an infra help desk ticket. So, so this one is, I think this one is, is Hacktoberfest and good first issue. Uh -huh. Any objections from the two of you? Nope. nope. Okay, all right. Okay, so let me put the text in there should be clearly mentioned. Okay, so, sorry. Let's see a quote reply. Okay, got it. Now, um, the documentation on that page, on that page should, Note the risk that an incorrectly entered email address, email address, or an aggressive spam filter filter may prevent the welcome email from arriving. If that happens, open a ticket at copy, just a minute, open a ticket at help desk here. Okay, got it. And since that only requires GitHub authentication, you can open that ticket even if your account, Jenkins.io account doesn't work. All right, so correctly noted as Hacktoberfest. Okay, let's keep reading. All right, now the Gradle thing, this one, I see it marked Hacktoberfest. Kristen, are you comfortable that somebody using Gradle can be told how to do a release? I don't use Gradle, and so I feel as ignorant as the day is long when it comes to yeah, what to do with Gradle. Either. Okay, so no estimate from either of us. Great. All right. Okay, more. What's the open liberty? Sorry, what was that? Uh, sorry, what's the open liberty? Oh, this one is a wiki migration. Oh, darn it. Okay, sorry, I missed the tag. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> 
I was like, oh, okay. But as a wiki wiki migration, it's saying, hey, there's this thing called the Liberty Profile about um, web, what do you call them? Web containers like Tomcat. And apparently Open Liberty is a web container. Okay. I was wondering if it would be something easy because it was... (laughs) But yeah, anyway, no, I guess it would not be. Never mind. <laughs> what about 3650? 3650 here. Oh, oh, this one's oh. a fun one. This one's a fun one. I think this needs to be fixed. Yeah, but it's really a tough one to fix. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, for me, the problem is this one really needs skills. And, and when I talked with Damien DePortal about it, he thinks it may be that the best thing we can do is completely replace this particular tutorial with use something done using Docker Compose to create the multi-component thing that we really need for this tutorial. So I'm hesitant to, I, in fact, I'm unwilling to mark this one as a good first issue because it, it requires a level of skill that uh, if I picked it up, I think I would spend three or four days working on it before I was confident I'd fixed it. Okay. Because okay. it's, it's we, we, say, we say very simple things here. Hey, it's easy. Just copy one of the examples and paste it into your Jenkins. We don't tell you that in order to use Agent Docker, you have to have a certain set of plugins installed. And you have to have a certain set of permissions on your uh, on what your Jenkins controller is allowed to do with Docker. And it's uncommon for people be, to be allowed to do that. And this one assumes that you've probably got executors enabled on your controller, or you've already added an agent. And of course, it never says any of those things. And and it's, it's this thing is is really really it needs an awful lot of pre- preconditions before this tutorial can be successful. Is there another issue of this? So scroll down someplace, there's a mention that they go and there are just a zillion Docker containers for Jenkins and they don't know what the difference is. Mm. I yes. the, and the issue. Oh, on the issue. Okay, so. Uh, oh, no, I think what he's it's saying here is a bewildering number of Docker plugins. And, and that is correct. There are multiple oh, Docker, Docker plugins, Python. each with a different approach to how you do Docker with Jenkins. And, and therefore, it, it makes it amplifies this even worse. Which plugin is it that provides the Docker declarative step? And you have to find that one. Right. So, and what he says is at least add, install the Docker pipeline plugin. My worry is that the Docker pipeline plugin may not be enough. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, no, wait a sec. This here, the the user says installing the Docker pipeline plugin fix the problem. Maybe we should mark this as Hacktoberfest. Yeah, if that's enough, and then maybe you have them as part of it, you know, clearly test the documentation. But if this is all it takes, I think this could be great. Okay. It would Let's really it. fix. Well, and, and if it's not fixed in Hacktoberfest, we should fix it post haste ourselves later. Okay, good. All right. Nice catch. Thank you. Good question. Okay, I don't understand that set of words. Okay, so it's saying as shading that only scalars and literals are supposed to have. Huh? Oh, wait a sec. First line of sequence entries, name doesn't have shading, name Jenkins home does. Oh, oh, I see what the concern is. Got it. It is that this thing is shaded in an unexpected way. Uh-huh. 
they were expecting either only only values to be highlighted or both the name and the value and in this case we got a name and a value highlighted but then we got a name with no value with a value and only the values highlighted and the 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 point is well taken but i have no idea how to fix that because i think that syntax highlighting from well let's look at it and see just to test it i think this is syntax highlighting from uh, ascii doc Ask, ascii doctor yep three and yaml so this is their their yaml syntax highlighting so one solution for it would be switch the layout so instead of using name colon we put name and then we indent the value but i'm not sure that's worth the pain so i would propose this one is not a good first issue any disagreement there dispute yeah okay continuing our looking then provide Wait a second. Okay. Yeah. Refreshing this page. Sorry. Just a minute. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. This one is a, is a wiki migration. And so I want it not to be listed Hacktoberfest. And actually, we can we can do one more search to find that those mistakes. The author of the issue, if it's get JV, then they should in general be listed as okay, this one is, this one is. Okay, so I'm now going to label these all as wiki migration. Like so. All right, okay. So we have looked through pages three and four. My assessment is we've covered the whole range of bugs because five and six were reviewed by Europe office hours earlier and we've been through one and two more than once. Everybody okay if we call that done? Would you yeah, like to take a different- we don't have enough good first issues that we're gonna have a big Oktoberfest. Good point. So we should go looking for more maybe? We've got right. 11. Do we need to come up with things that maybe are not on our list? I that's that's what Meg had done last week and yeah. I think it was particularly effective. So maybe the technique then is we do some quick looking to see if we can find obvious problems. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just look at look at documentation? We could put the three of us in parallel. We could look at the pages together, looking for things. For instance, a common area where we had problems before was in the developer guide. No, developer is probably a bad choice for first time contributors, isn't it? Yeah. It's probably, yeah. Well, it depends what we find. Well, the tutorial. I think the tutorial is like fairly new, so it's pretty good. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. um, let's see. I wonder what did troubleshooting Jenkins. That's something that people tend to throw something in and nobody goes back and reviews. Right. Yeah, it's only got two entries, diagnosing errors and obtaining okay. a thread dump. So it lacks content and we can't make it a good first effort to. Right. Actually. What's in the appendix and glossary? So appendix just has the disclaimer, please don't put anything here. Okay, that's useful. Well, it's it's. I think it's how we actually want the appendix. We don't want it to have anything in it. Because if there's something in the appendix, it means we didn't have a find have a find a place for it to put it otherwise. 
So then I would ask them, why do we have an appendix? But Exactly. That's a valid question. Remove appendix. Good first issue. Mm, yeah, there you go. I'll, I'll give you that one. I think that's, that's a very good idea. New issue. Documentation. Remove the appendix page. Empty and and will remain so empty. Yeah. Okay, so. I, I, an open source project. I mean, they're in, in proprietary, old fashioned proprietary author documentation, there's a place for appendices for like mm -hmm. reference tables and stuff. But in open source, you got too many people chiming in. I think it's just gonna be, be a disaster. Right. We don't intend for there ever to be to ever put content on that page. All right. And agreed that this is a good first issue. Sounds good to me. Oops. Good first issue and hack tower fits. Okay. All right. Continuing our search. Glossary. Glossary is a point of, con of conversation and dispute. I'm hesitant to put a, a new contributor into it because it's about usages and words. They're going to get burned. Yep. Exactly. Unless there was something, are there newer topics? Eh. See this page for more information. See what, yeah. what I would like to see. I don't like straight glossaries. I think they tend to be useless and annoying mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But but like for um, the plugin, there was a link. I don't know where it's going. Oh, oh, right. So the link is to job. So it's just the, the oh, links. Oh, it's within that. Right. The links within the glossary are. And so it might be that what each one should say is, for more information about this topic, go here and then take you to a, a better page or to right. a, a more in-depth page. Agent, for instance, could easily say, hey, here's this page all about agents. Pipeline, right. here's, here's a whole section of the document about pipelines. Right. And that, there would be a bunch of good first issues because most of those terms are covered elsewhere in the docs. Mm -hmm. and look through the docs and find what's useful. Yeah, so now is, the, is it likely to be a source of significant contention when someone chooses to link to um, using Jenkins agents instead of linking to uh, managing agents, managing nodes? And, and so my worry is is the two the, there may be there may be enough contention there to make a poor experience for this first time contributor. Well, on the other hand, they should be able to look. I mean, they've got a brain. Keep looking just because you found one reference. Mm -hmm. Keep looking, and may, uh. you know, and for for a lot of these things, you may you know that makes sense. You've got here's how you use it, here's how you manage it, or um, here's how you troubleshoot, and to take any of those topics and make sure that they flow through to each other. Um, core would, how do you install core? Mm -hmm. um, downstream, do we have instructions to how you, does the pipeline documentation tell you how you set this up? Uh, it should. So there's the build step that describes it. Um, yeah. But oddly enough, I don't see any really obvious matches for downstream or upstream in the search. So so could be. I mean, it's it's not a not a bad idea to say, hey, should we? Should we add links from the glossary to other pages, for instance, 
agent, for more information, refer to managing nodes and refer to using agents, using Jenkins agents. Right. Um, and there's a security section on agent security, I think, isn't there? Oh, good question. Or uh, access control, securing. Or it may be in an unmerged PR. Well, it could easily be in one of these sections under, for instance, access control. Nope. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't see it at the moment, but but it there could be could well be something. So the agent listen port, for instance, is certainly there. So this your your suggestion is extend the glossary so that it becomes not just a definition of the term, but also links to other useful content related to that term in the in the documentation. Right. If you wanted to bulletproof the thing, of course, we could make a series of we could instead of having one big one, you could have, you know, make the agent glossary item link to other docs, make the control, you know, we could, and we could hand feed it, we could say, make it point to here and there, but right. then writing the, then it'd be easier to do the work than to make the ticket. Um, well, but, but isn't there, isn't that same risk there as we review it because they they may approach this and say, well, I don't know where to find things about agents. And they'll then have to do the research to go reading here. Okay, where should I, where should I look? Where should I search? And especially because the ter agent node terminology. Is... Right. But that, but to go and I mean, but it's also, a good, I mean, it's a good, well, and you know what else? Because it is Hacktoberfest. If you got some people who are interested in this, <laughs> you could two or three could sit down with somebody with one somebody who knows stuff and go and look through and say, you know, and we could point some things out. Because mm, right. somewhere there is, and I think I shoved it in someplace, a little summary of agent node next, you know. I know where it was. It was in the training. It was something I tried to save. Right. Well, yeah. So what's a node? What's an agent? Yep. Yep. I mean, there is a good exercise. I mean, for when you're a writer, you do this periodically is just take a topic and start tracing it through and see, are there holes? Does everything point to each other? Are there redundancies? Are there things that contradict each other? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and trying to add stuff to the glossary would put somebody into that, which could be good for the project and a great exercise for them. I mean, you might end up with only two people who want to do Hacktoberfest who are real novices and it'd be irrelevant. But if you had a group, I don't know. No, let's let's take it. So I've I'm gonna submit. Oh, I hadn't finished submitting this one. Okay, so remove the in, uh, the appendix page let's create a new issue that says um okay so extend glossary uh, page uh, glossary entries with links to documentation sections i can fix it i would like this i don't know I would like that not to be just one issue, but I don't want one for each term. Are is there some grouping that would work? Sure, sure. So let's let's, let's talk, talk about, for instance, what if we said agent and node glossary entries? They make a logical grouping, right? What are 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 there some others like that? So uh, job and build and artifact might be well connected yes. oh cloud cloud probably connects to logically agent. to agent uh -huh. executor probably connects logically to agent yes with, with so, master i see that listed too that might actually be an update that we need to generally make well no master in this case tells us hey it's deprecated so good, and, okay. and that's intentional. Good, good, we good, 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 we good. listed <laughs> as like, oh, yeah. here's the, the evil term, please don't use it, use the correct term. 
Okay, cool. Good. Although Absolutely. even even that one could include a link to, um, hey, and here's the blog post that describes that it's deprecated. Oh, nice. Right. Uh, oh, we although we don't have the word slave. Interesting. Oh. Okay, it's our slave has already been removed, and I guess we may be at the point where a master could even be removed. No, but, because it. Like GitHub, places. GitHub's trying to move away, but master's still there for GitHub. Slave is in the software. Certainly, both terms are in the software and will be there for years to come. Right, yes. and but that would be worth mentioning too that you know there's a, you know we could shut down everything for a year and rewrite all the software to not use them. <laughs> yeah, it'd be much more than a year, and it would be broken uh -huh. thoroughly. Okay, so yeah, so. I actually think it's bad that slave is not listed here. And because people in talking still, I mean, one thing that a glossary is useful for is if you're in a conversation and people are throwing out terms and you don't know what they are, they're a quick memory thing. Mm -hmm. And if some, and people still talk about your slaves when right. they talk and I go look and I got nothing. Mm -hmm. Tell me it's an old evil bad word. You shouldn't use it. And here's, you know, and here's the blog post that tells you why. And unfortunately, there are some references in software that just. Yeah, the, I, I think you've got a good point. So, so that may be a separate topic for discussion. I'm not sure I'm ready to put a, a, a novice on the let's add the word slave to it that's true yeah that's it may it. need a conversation with daniel and others it may need some digging into the git history yeah right what about when it was deleted what about making the issue like this would be um extend agent and related entries and then for the just for the title and then have the list Good. inside the description Good, yes, I like that. Okay, so. Now the challenge here is we need destinations for them and I'm not sure there is one for cloud. Agent uh, glossary entry should connect, should link to, um, managing nodes and um, using Jenkins agents. Right, and right. maybe security. Uh, Look for additionally. Security. Oh, may... you know what? Because there's, there is that um, agent controller filter. That's it, there was a section on that and then that I think in that PR that's subsumed because it's no longer something you can set. So it just uh, mentions something that's there. See, and and I think the agent, the agent to controller access control is no longer mentioned anywhere in the documentation. I think Daniel deleted it completely. Oh. Because it's it's no longer, I thought it was no longer a facility, right? You no longer get the option. You you simply can't right. But if you want to know what does what what are the ways that Jenkins could potentially be breached and what what do we do to protect it? That is an important protection that is there. You just can't turn it off. Yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant to put that level of detail in a link in the glossary, right? Right. But for me, the the glossary is is much more high level, but these two mm -hmm. manage these two pages make sense. I agree, but I, I think that what I'm saying is I think that information is someplace. Uh, like great information see. about how the agent is kept secure. Um, oh, there's another one. Um, um, ephemeral agents are safer. There's also the issue of if you use an agent over and over again, it could get tainted by malware and affect another build. Mm, there right. are there are security issues related to agent, and they are discussed someplace. Okay, let's see. Yeah. So ephemeral agent. Defining execution environments. Define agents for use in the pipeline. Yes, okay, good. So that's a, a, a tour of agents that makes sense. So that should be included, good. Uh, 
and and defining execution environments. So I think this exercise is showing that we have to give those destination lists because Maybe. I don't see how a, a new contributor can do this successfully, but I think it could be quite successful if we do it. Right. And have them do the, do create the text. Yeah. Okay, so and cloud. And we can back and that in later, yeah. Now cloud, I don't know if we've got really good documentation what about it. installing is there there's some that, how you install it uh, i don't CWS think aws versus oh oh well that's a good point there are yeah so for me cloud is cloud in the context of the glossary was talking about agents in the cloud ah right dynamic agent provisioning through azure and ec2 it huh, could, no mention of Google. That's nice. Well, it could mention Google. It could mention DigitalOcean. It could mention yeah. uh, Hetzner. There are there are several clouds now that that Oracle Cloud. So, so that's a maybe that's a different one for cloud. Maybe and, there's a list someplace of all the clouds. There must be a list someplace. Well, we don't have to put it in the glossary. Well, it's a good point, isn't there? Kristen, this is one we can look to you for. Isn't there an extension that is a cloud extension? Some one or more extension points that are cloud cloud related, right? And this extensions mm -hmm. index. So let's look at maybe we look at EC2. Okay, here's the Amazon EC2 plugin. It has no. Okay, I don't see anything there. No Java doc. I was like, it could also be that we could ask people to improve some of these yeah, well, particular yeah, tickets. Well, yeah, what I was looking for more was um, cloud. So Adobe Cloud. Actually, Adobe Cloud Manager would be another one that let's see what extension points it has. Nope. Okay, so, so maybe cloud providers are not done through extension points because having okay so for example openstack again this doesn't so it's so i think i'm just looking in the wrong place what well no wait a sec no yeah All right, so so no easy way to well, I guess I know the easy way to find cloud implementations cloud. All right, so here we've got all the cloud beast kit stuff gets good. Yeah, interesting. And okay, here's OpenStack Cloud, Oracle Cloud Inf Infrastructure Compute, Google Cloud Build, EC2 Cloud Access. Access Oracle Cloud Info. Yeah, so so there definitely are cloud plugins, but non-trivial work to find them all. Because EC2 isn't even listed here, right? Maybe it, yeah, it doesn't have the word cloud. So ah well, no. well that's EC2 not even cloud access. nine years ago oh no well and that's and that's definitely not the uh no not the ec2 plugin no, right it's not. that's <laughs> no. ec2 there it is hmm. okay so well all right back to our okay we've got cloud i'm so cloud entries should lay or the, how about this the cloud entry should link to more uh, plugins for it should in, it should including all right oracle cloud uh, adobe cloud manager um i think hetzner let's see who else so, oh google cloud 
Azure. Azure's already in there. Yeah, oh, is so, Azure in there? Okay, so. Uh, but that's included Azure uh, and fat fingers. Let's see, let's see, three main. Oh, so we've got Azure, Google Cloud, uh, AW, oh, EC2 or AWS. Uh, and I thought Hetzner had a plugin. Oh, DigitalOcean, DigitalOcean, right. Shame on me. And now I really do want to check to see if Hetzner has one. I thought they did. This is a German uh, provide. Yes, Hetzner Cloud. Okay. That way people know there are lots of cloud implementations. Right. Fair enough. Good first issue and Hacktoberfest. Oh, oh, now I need to link to the glossary. Oof. Bad fingers. Okay, the way it's phrased. All right, I'm taking your silence as, as assent, as yes. agreement. Yes. Okay. All right, so that was that's one um, addition to the glossary. Are there others that are as promising? For instance, build and what else might we link? Build and job? No. Yeah, so, okay. How about, how about the pipeline related items? Should stage, step, stage and step oh, link yeah. to some place that's more useful, more... Right. Now, now, where would it go is, is now the question. Okay, so if we look at pipeline here, we could lead them to getting started. We could lead them to um, using a Jenkins file, which talks about Concepts, build, test, etc. Um. I'm open to suggestions there. Oh, steps should reference the steps reference. Oh, that's fair, right? Although, isn't that a little terrifying? Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's a good point. It should. Okay. If I'm a sophisticated user and new to Jenkins, and I want to know about steps, I want to know what steps are available. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, extend... Um, glossary entry, the step glossary entry to link, oh no, link from the step glossary entry to uh, various, to pipeline, to helpful, no, to pipeline, Pages, okay. Link from the step glossary page, glossary entry to multi to several pipeline pages. 
Uh, and now the examples getting started. And would you be okay if using a Jenkins file were in there? Sure. All right, and we have run up against my time limit. Oh. Sorry to make the two of you endure me typing. Any other topics we need to go over before we, before we call it the end of our session? You're such a nice person. I would love to just throw some big topic at you that we have to discuss before we stop and see how you react. <laughs> right. When I tell you, Meg, please go pound sand or something. Is that what, you're <laughs> like, what we're going to do is put that on the agenda for the next meeting. And thank you. Ex <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Massive defect deflector shield <laughs> yeah, exactly. goes up. And thank you for asking. That was an excellent question. We'll talk about that next time. Yeah. <laughs> I had my opportunity at the beginning to add items. So yes. <laughs> right. All right. Let's go. This would be good if we have any spare cycles. We still need some more first. And my experience last week was almost any doc that I opened up, if I glanced through it, I could find problems. Right, right. And certainly there are things to improve in all sorts of places, right? Absolutely. Right. I almost, almost like you could just say, read this doc and see if it needs editing, updating, et cetera. Yeah, um, but oh, they're not. Oh, Kubernetes. There's no Kubernetes entry in the glossary. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. I, and we I'll certainly used we certainly use the word Kubernetes in lots of places. Um, um, and in install. I think we even have a section for installing Kubernetes. Right. Yeah, there's a subsection of for install for Kubernetes. Okay, so. Oh, it's a long, meaty one too. Even. We. Oh yeah, when that was a Google season of Docs, that was our first our Google season of Docs project where Zenob created the installing guide for Kubernetes. So uh -huh. add a Kubernetes entry. Entry to the glossary. We have a, an entire section, installation section, with two or three different ways to install on Kubernetes, but don't have a glossary entry. Entry for Kubernetes. Add a glossary entry. entry that describes Kubernetes. I'm not going to insert any cynical comments here. <laughs> and uh, and link to the installing page. Yeah. Um, okay, now on that theme, should the should the glossary entry that says Linux, oh, there isn't one. Okay. Good. Or All Windows. Right, so, or Windows, right. Okay. So all right. Now we're five minutes into your time. Yeah. So now I'm really going to disconnect. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Next week, Bye. same time, same place. Next yep. week, same time, same place. Okay. Great. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.